Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. And the coffee angel. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Cheryl, for everybody's checking on me because I am never under the weather. And y'all, I have been busting it. I got back from Ireland and hit the ground running. And, you know, I think the ground has smacked me back just a little bit. So today I'm a little under the weather. That's okay because I have somebody very special. She is my friend. She's my friend with Nashville Roots with a brand new book. Her name is Kathy Pelletier. I'll hold it up so you can see it. I got a better picture of it and I'll show it to you a little bit later. But we're going to find out about that in just a few minutes. But first, you know, it's Wagon Tales Wednesday. So I'm going to go. We're going to go and take a look at what's happening in Franklin, Tennessee. Hello, Franklin. I'm Eric Stuckey, your city administrator. So it must be time for the top three things you need to know this week. Item one, you just saw it. It's our budget that's been recommended for fiscal 24. That is starting July 1 of 23 and runs for the next 12 months. Uh, it's a 482 page document. I won't go into all of it, but the big picture, the all funds budget is $218.2 million. That's a 0.5% increase over where it is today. And our general fund, which is our primary operating fund, is at 102.5 million, which is about a 3% increase over today. The good news is our property tax remains unchanged. It is the lowest property tax rate in the state of Tennessee for a city of 50,000 or greater population. So that's good. We're maintaining and building on our services and we'll be working on this budget and getting approval through the balance of May and June with our board of mayor and aldermen. So there'll be public hearings and other meetings. Stay tuned for that. But uh, proud of our team's work in putting that budget together. That's item one. Item number two. This Friday night at five o'clock at Jim Warren Park is the annual Touch a Truck event. Great event for the family. Bring the kids out, see all that great city equipment, climb on it, have fun, great time. There'll be a no horn hour from five o'clock to six. So if your little ones don't like the horns, that's the time to be there. But a run from five to eight, great event for the family. And then finally, get ready for State of the City. That's happening next Wednesday, the 24th of May with the mayor. Great time. We'll be talking about the events in the city and what's happened in the last year. That's it for now. Take care and we'll see you soon. Well, we got some people who kind of pave our way so we can have this show and we talk about them and the Nashville Predators. I don't know what our city would be like without them, but uh, I don't know what you're like without them. There's so much fun. If you got your season tickets, they had a great season of hockey. We're going to be heading up to talk to someone who probably knows her way around hockey just a little bit. She's a, a nor'easter <laughs> in more ways than one. Kathy Pelletier right after this. Hockey in Music City just hits different. It's one big honky-tonk party. It's the sea of gold in the crowd. The goals, the saves, the celebrations. It's an experience like no other. Experience Predators hockey all season long. Visit NashvillePredators.com slash season tickets and join the Loyal Legion today. That's NashvillePredators.com slash tickets. And we'll see you at Bridgestone Arena. Loving us some uh, Predators hockey. We got Kids Corner coming up in just a few with the Nashville Zoo. But first, we're going to head up to Maine, my friend Kathy Pelletier. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dev. You know. It's cold up here. Still cold. Still cold. It was just snowing. It was just snowing. I almost put my bonnet on, but I want you to see that I have gray hair now since we've seen <laughs> each other last. 
you know, I I cut all the color out of my hair, so I'm I, I have white hair. I'm just you know, it's just but you know what? We've earned it. We're still here. We've earned it. And uh, you were in Nashville for a long time. Do you want to talk a little bit briefly uh, about Nashville roots? Yeah, that's yeah. How we met. It was how we met, and just seeing the Franklin thing and all your pictures. You know, I have this deep love for the South. I moved there when I was twenty two just before I turned 23 and I think I stayed until I was like I went to Toronto for a couple of years and then uh, I went back and so in all I mean I didn't leave again to like Tennessee till I was like 40 god 45 or something so mm -hmm. that's a big part of my life I wrote most of my novels in Tennessee and um, I love it when you get off the plane and you feel the heat when you're coming mm -hmm. from up north and you feel the heat you know you're in the south and you can almost smell the you can almost hear the cicadas. So yeah, just now, May, what is it? May 16th, May 17th, June, I don't know. But it was <laughs> snowing. It was snowing a few minutes ago. So um, I miss the South. Yeah, that's well, how we miss. The South misses you. This is our Wagon Tales oh. Wednesday. So we all talk about animal rescue. And I last yeah. week was locked up out at Hickory Hill and had people pay my bail to raise money for this beautiful collection of farms that rescue oh uh horses and donkeys and uh yeah. things of all sorts and uh so i was uh, glad to be a part of that and we got a little story about that coming up in a in just a bit yeah. you and i met and if people got my book earl kitty came from you it did he did he did he was a gorgeous i supplied stray cats and you know and i you go driving in some of the the back rows in in not intending to do anything but taking a nice drive or going to lunch somewhere and there would be a litter of kittens at the side of the road or a litter of puppy dogs. I didn't want to have a lot of animals because I, I wanted to live in Europe and travel and do, but I ended up, I rescued 75 one year and got them homes. When I say rescue, I, I really mean picked up at the side of the road or dumpsters where they, they had been thrown. Um, so 75 one year and got them well and got them good homes and you were one, maybe not that year, but yeah. Oh, I knew you were okay, Dev. I didn't have to interview you the way I did some of the other. <laughs> <laughs> Earl lived a very, oh, very, very Earl. long life. And I want to get into this amazing book. I love books that have the historic angle. And, but I love stories that inspire. And you've got yeah. everything in spades in this. Uh, Northeaster, oh. a story of courage and survival in the blizzard of 1952. You know your way around a snowstorm. so I do. I do. I know nothing about hockey. <laughs> <laughs> I say to Tom, are you for the like the white men or for the red men? Which, you know, <laughs> the uniforms they're wearing. And uh, no, I know nothing. I'm, I'm married to a hockey expert, but I know nothing. Um, yeah, it was it was a, a difficult book, you know, compared to my being a novelist for so many years. You, you tend to make a, everything up or just about everything. You do research, but you might have 50 files on your computer, maybe 100, I doubt it. For the Einstein book I did with the physicist, we had I had over 5,000 files, folders and files on my computer. And for this one, I was telling you, I had about 3,400, I think, files that I had to keep. And I'm about to do it again on my next book. And God, I, I don't know. It's you hard. You do so much research. It is hard. Mm -hmm. um, and you've done memoirs. I think uh, the, I think the last time we connected was over Doug yes. Kershaw's book. Doug Kershaw, our friend Doug Kershaw. We love. Mm -hmm. That's the only memoir. And I only did that because Doug was my friend. And his manager asked me first. And I said no several times. And then when I met Doug and we became friends, I mean, what a life. Oh. Um so I'm so proud of that book because it doesn't read like a celebrity memoir. You no. know, it's more my skill as a novelist and Doug's mm -hmm. honesty. I mean, there were times, God, are you really going to say this? Are you, are you really going to tell America this? Um, but his honesty was um, so gratifying as we worked. And as you know, we worked a lot of years. Yeah. So oh, I, I don't know. And I've written screenplays, you know, but mostly I'm thinking of doing another nonfiction book. Northeaster is creative nonfiction. And if I get a second, I'll talk about that as a yeah, novelist, yeah. as a novelist, most of my life. Uh, when I came to write the Einstein book with the physicist, I started researching for astronomers in 1919. And mm -hmm. I found that I didn't want to make stuff up because in a novel, everything's true. It's a true world. 
that fictional world is all true because I created it. Novelists created it. You might not like it. You might put it down, but it's all true. So when I came to doing fiction, a nonfiction, I wanted it. I was obsessed with the truth all those years and didn't realize it. You know, for instance, I could say that Jane got up and put on a red sweater and looked out and it was snowing as it is today. And that's true because it's in a novel. I control the weather. I dress Jane. I created Jane. That's all true. When it came to like the physicist book, a Northeaster book, if I didn't know what color shirt Einstein had on when his wife left him and took the boys and left Zurich on the train, I wouldn't I wouldn't dress him. If it was in a letter. Einstein was wearing a blue shirt, I would use it. So it became very difficult to rely wow. upon just the facts. And, and for Northeaster, I, I did a little of both. I created mm -hmm. as well some fiction. And I only did it because I was able to talk to all the children who are in their 70s and 80s now for most of these people. And I let them read every word I wrote as I went. And because they gave me approval, I didn't feel I was cheating as much as creative nonfiction is cheating. Now I'm done. I haven't talked to anybody in ages, so now I'm done. <laughs> you know what? I I love writers. I love songwriters and I love writers uh, because they yeah. have a way. And you've been both. You've been both. I, and yeah, well, yeah, well, dabbled in songwriting. I really, you know, when people say, oh, you've written songs. I mean, the people, the men and women who write the hit songs are good at what they do. I dabbled. Um, but yeah, I learned a lot about writing from songwriters in, in Nashville, Bob McDill, especially, uh, good old boys like me. I mean, Bob knows I've listened to that song thousands of times, uh, Lee Bennigan's on Murfreesboro road, come home yes. after call at 3 AM and sit in my car with a six pack of beer and play it over and over that cassette. And, yep. and the, the neighbors were getting up, getting their papers. And I'm thinking maybe I ought to go to bed. <laughs> uh, well, Bob no, McDill I, music will get you that way. You know, he's good. Uh, Congratulations. Bob Goy is going into the hall of fame this year. And yes. Yes. And Tanya, Tanya and I yeah. did a book together. I, I, we're, we're thinking of doing a children's book together. Um, yeah. Nice to see that happen for them and God, what talent. I know truthfully. Well, I love yeah. the way you talk about things. I love the way you write things. And this book, uh, I always do motivation moments on my show. And I want to tell you, I always say there's something motivational, any survival story. I don't care if it's something you never go through. There is, a, there are yeah. things that you can glean from that and you can apply it to your life. And you go, you know what? In that book, they did this. I can do yeah. this. I can survive this. And isn't it something to think the fabric that people have to get through things, human yeah. beings have this amazing yeah. ability and we don't know most of the time unless it happens to us, you know, and, mm -hmm. and that that storm wasn't a great storm. I mean, three feet of snow. Are you kidding me? That's outside my door every winter. That was nothing. It's catching people unprepared that did it for that storm. Um, it was not the great blizzard, as I've seen some reviewers write. Um, and, yeah, those people rose to the occasion and it um it, it, it makes you proud sometimes in this world where you're not always proud to be a human being mm -hmm. on the planet with the awful stuff that's happening. Um, yeah. It makes you proud to know that human beings are good people. Many are good people um, inherently. That's the thing I found in this book that it reminds you that people are good. We hear all the news stories about the bad, but m most people are good. Most yes. people are good and yes, most life so. is good. And, and so we try to find those same stories here on our show. And this book, we've got some copies that we're going to give away. And Thanks to my publisher, Pegasus. Yes. Um, my yes. editor, Jessica, Jessica Case, and they were happy to say, oh yeah, we'll send them down to Nashville. So good. Well, uh, and it's about to come out in paperback as well. It is in July. Yes. And I have a, a middle grade novel coming in July called The Mystery Traveler at Lake Fortune for readers eight to nine. Tom did the cover for the book. My husband, no, Tom, really so very excited about that. Yes. He's uh, he's Van Gogh now. Um, <laughs> so hockey, hockey loving Van Gogh. So, um, yeah, the the, uh, the paperback comes in July. But we have hardbacks to give away, don't we, Devin? Did we they send do. you They are yeah. hardbacks to give away. So if you would like a copy um, I'm going to be drawing at the end of this week. You just put um, Kathy's book or 
I want that book. If you just put book, <laughs> I will put book. your name book exclamation <laughs> point. <laughs> and I will put your name in the drawing, whether you're watching on LinkedIn, whether you're watching on YouTube or whether you're watching on Twitter, wherever you are, you could just, you know, at Devin O'Day book. And I will nice. make sure that 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 will come to me. And uh, and I'm going to put it in and I'll I'll grab it. And on Friday, I'll pull it next week. I'll announce the winner. How about that? Very the nice. winners, because I've got several. I've got a little box of books. This one's Great. mine. Y'all can't have that one. <laughs> but the other Good. ones I will share. I will share with everybody. Kathy, I want people to follow you. And because you're always doing something. Kathy's had movies done of her work. And she's always doing treatments for TV shows and children's books. Yeah. And the true soul of a writer. Yeah. True soul of a writer. yeah. I, you know what I call it, Devin? I call it playing in all corners of the sa creative sandbox. And this is my very ill cat. Excuse me, guys. He's, oh. he's from Tennessee and he's very ill and he wants to get in my lap right now. And I'm going to take him. So forgive the camera moving. Uh, he's my last Tennessee cat, Dev, the last oh. rescue. He was a few weeks old, lying, dying in a, in a, what next? And Tom found him. So he's my last Tennessee connection. Well, well it's Wagon you know. Tails Wednesday. It's Wagon Tails Wednesday. And so we got to have all oh, look at that sweet baby. You know, he's 19 keep, years keep, old, guys. Wow. People don't even he's realize that. It, I will tell you what my vet told me. You know why, Kathy, why your pets live so long? Uh, you know why? Tell me. Because they want to. Oh. They're your babies and they love you and they connect with you. So, well, yeah, I mean, we all want to live forever, don't we? Well, I don't, you know what? I'm going to take that back. I was just telling Devin, my new book, if I take it on, is going to be something very different, very different corner of the creative sandbox. It's going to be about a murder that occurred in Milwaukee in 1959, uh, 69. So I've gone from 1919 to 1952 to 1969. And I said, Devin, it makes me so lonesome for, for that period of time, you know, because I was still at the end of my, I was still, uh, 16 years old, just starting college, about to get kicked out of college too, by the way, for <laughs> radicalism, they called it, which is hilarious. They do it at lunch today. But, um, <laughs> but I missed that period of time. And, and so I'm, I'm just going over the music, to the lyrics for Bad Moon Rising for a chapter. And um, I miss the South. We all want to live forever, but I'm so afraid of this new, this new period of time. I mean, I, I think I had my I'm glad that my books came out when books were still so unique. They weren't like the 40s and the 30s in this country, but they were still, you know, you knew you had a book out. You had book yeah. columnists, editors all over the country. They're all gone. You had um, a distinction there. And now it's still, I'm still glad I write books, but it doesn't seem to, it doesn't seem to be the same. So I'm getting to that age where I'm starting to sound like, you know, that generation. Oh my God, here's another generation nostalgic for the past, but we are I moving still, quickly. I still say I'm glad I was born when I was because I've been alive when all the best music came out. I'm just oh, going to say. <laughs> I've got that in a chapter I'm writing. The best damn music ever to hit the planet Earth is what I said the 1960s. Yeah. So yeah. I'm That's all you. good. All I, good. Follow Kathy. Follow that. Kathy Pelletier's work. The book is Nor'easter. You can get it anywhere. Fine books are sold. You can order it online, have it delivered. You'll have it tomorrow. Get oh. a copy of this book and follow everything. And we're going to talk again because you've got more books coming out. Can we talk again I soon? Do. Yes, please. I oh. And again, everybody, thank you for reading. South, I missed you. For those of you who are in the South. And this has been nice on a snowy oh. day in Northern Maine. Thanks, Jan. I love you, sister. You take care. Mm -hmm. My bye. bye, bye. Love and love and love in her. Hey, you guys, the rescue at work at New Leash on Life in Gallup, I mean, in uh, Lebanon, Tennessee. They're my, it's right, it's like down the street from me. I just love these people. I do a lot of stuff to fundraise for them. June 10th, they're doing rescue puppy yoga at 2 30. If you go to New Leash on Life, the home of the Joy Clinic, you can find out a little bit more about it. Hey, Hickory Hill, they have several farms that work together and we all got, a bunch of us got locked up so we could work with, 
and save money and raise money for these wonderful horses. And I think I've got the little video queued up because I want you guys, we're going to go to Hickory Hill. It's, it's Wagon Tails Wednesday and I've got to share this. My lap. I'm telling you, he just makes me he laugh. Just keeps, he just keeps backing up going, okay, keep rubbing me there. I really like that. Well, and when you try to tell somebody that, they're going, you want me to do what? And I go, he really likes you to scratch his, well, you know. It, it, it scratches his ass. His ass, yes, ass, yes definitely. <laughs> hey, Robbie Lynn, how are you, my darling? It's good to see you, too. And I wish I could see. I'm, I'm like, um, this, Here. this donkey and I are getting to be really good friends. Oh, I can. Want me to hold your phone? We were getting to be really good friends. I'm going to let that be our daily giggle today brought to us by 50 forward people, 50 and over who want to have a wonderful community. Check out 50 forward.org. And they want to encourage you to be part of the join all of us research project. Sharing your health story matters. I lost my sister to cervical cancer. When I'm teaching about women's cancers, I'm thinking about her, and I'm doing this for her. Joining the All of Us Research Program means contributing to research that may help people of different backgrounds. This research process will only become better if we have more diverse communities involved. We need to be represented. We need to be part of this medical breakthrough. Take part in the largest health database of its kind. Get involved with all of us because any medical breakthrough that we'll see has to have your input. It has to have part of you in it. Share your health stories today and help guide the discoveries of tomorrow. Learn more at joinallofus.org. Tired of hanging lights every year? We get it. That's why Southern Nights is here to help. We install programmable lighting on your home or business so you can enjoy beautiful, customizable lighting all year round. No more ladders, tangled lights, or cold nights outside. We do the work, you do the celebrating. Call Southern Nights today and take the hassle out of holiday lighting forever. For a free quote, give us a call at 931-241-3074 or visit our Facebook page at Southern Nights. There are so many things going on, including it is Public Service Recognition Week. And for our motivation moment, let's salute some of those people who are in public service and keep our world just a ticking. It is Public Service Recognition Week, and so we're recognizing the great work of our team throughout the community and the great work they do every day, all day, to serve our community and keep things working well for you, for our citizens. It's been great. It started on Sunday, but we've had food trucks for the last two days. This is our third day, and it's another great day. Oh, so we've been at our public works facility at City Hall, and today, we're at Jim Warren Park and just having a good time together, having some great food and just a fun way to say thank you for the great work our team does every day. Yeah. source was a large meat-eating dinosaur, even bigger than T-Rex. Scientists estimate that it weighed 15 tons. That's as much as two to three T-Rex, five rhinos, seven giraffes, 150 Komodo dragons, and 15,000 guinea pigs. When you come here to Dino Truck at the National Zoo, make sure not to only visit the Dragonosaurus, but also my second favorite dinosaur, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. 
Come check out Dino Truck at the National Zoo. It's going to be dynamite. Is that not the cutest kid you've ever, ever seen? Okay, he might not be the cutest kid, but he's a darn cute one. And I'm going to tell you, Shelly Satterfield, you got a grandson that could do that very same commercial. I'm just going to tell you. So next time we go, to, we're going to take your little ones and we're going to do a commercial with them. <laughs> hey, the city of Murphy's where I have some exciting things going on. Make a note of this. Get ready to splash into a new career at the City of Murfreesboro's second annual Summer Career Fair on June 9th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the Civic Plaza at City Hall. The Career Fair is presented in partnership with the American Job Center Tennessee. More than 30 employers representing almost every industry, including FedEx, the Murfreesboro Police Department, Embassy Suites, Southwest Airlines, Slim and Huskies, and Chick-fil-A will be a part of this year's fair. So don't forget to bring your resume because some employers will be doing on-site interviews. Be sure to mark your calendars for the second annual Summer Career Fair, June 9th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Murfreesboro City Hall. Nobody loves singer-songwriters and people with new music more than Brenda Fielder and my friends over at Mid-South Exteriors. Mid-South Exteriors can give you a whole new look with hardy board instead of that old dated siding. Maybe you just got some stuff that's just worn out. They can affordably, because of the way they do business, the way they have done business. This is a local Tennessee company. They're not just a fly-by-night. They're not just a franchise that comes in here. Nope, nope, nope. They are the stuff, and they can help you affordably make changes for your <clears throat> If, for your land, for your uh, home and protecting the investment that you have. And there is some new music coming from my friend, Judy Pastor. And, you know, normally we do the Daily Yummy, but now the Daily Yummy has to do with music. Thank you, Brenda Fielder and my folks at Mid-South Exteriors. Hi, I'm Brenda Fielder. At Mid-South Exteriors, our custom sunrooms bring the sunshine in without all the heat and the bugs. And they keep you warm all winter while you enjoy the outdoors all year round. They add real value because we build them like your house to match your house. Or let us save you energy by replacing your windows and old siding. And because we have no retail overhead, we come to you and sell direct to you for less. Call us at 833-8003 or visit us at Exteriors.com. Are you working on some new music now? I sure am. Tell us about it. What are you doing? What yeah. you got up your sleeve? Um, well, um, I've got an album in the works. I have some new songs already cut for it. And later this year, um, no dates yet, but later this year it's going to be released. And I've got some wonderful people producing and working uh, with some just, you know, you know how Nashville is, oh, yeah. the best. Yeah. So in my opinion, um, so yeah, so that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. That's my buddy, Judy Pastor and my friend, Jimmy Bowen. And Jimmy Bowen does a wonderful show and he's about to, uh, to do some more tapings. You can find him on Canyon Star Television. It's a free app that you can download and he's part of that. <clears throat> and Judy Pastor has new music and she's fantastic. If you see her playing at 12 Keys or around town, y'all go see her. And if you don't have tickets to the Nashville Sounds, you are missing out because they've always got something good, including this past week when we celebrated moms. NashvilleSounds.com. You can't see the sights without the sounds. From the crack of the bat to the roar of the crowd and everything in between, discover what Hit City has to offer. Spend your nights cheering on the Nashville Sounds at First Horizon Park with giveaways, fireworks shows, theme weekends, and more. Single game tickets are on sale now. Visit NashvilleSounds.com to claim your seat today. I love it. He really could. And yes, <laughs> I go, I've got to have her grandson do the commercials for the Nashville Zoo. Elizabeth, I love this. The happy boy getting his scratches. Yes, talking about Hickory Hill Animal Rescue. Um, a lot of people, Leslie checking in from North Carolina. Hello. A lot of people want Kathy's book. Uh, hey, Steve Bernie. Understood the assignment. Understood the assignment. Everyone, if you want Kathy's book, you just put Kathy's book right there in the corner and we'll draw from those on Friday next week. I'll let you know if you are a winner. Angie, how are you, my darling? Good to see you. And I 
think. Oh, Corinne. Don't want to miss Corinne. She understands what snow is being from Buffalo. And a shout out to Perry. I think Perry might watch us in the replay. Y'all be safe out there. Be kind. Remember, most of all, you are loved. That's it for today. Have a great rest of your day. We are home. We are family. We are things to do and place to see. Mom and Pops, local grown, small business Saturdays. We are Main Street, Main Street, Main Street. We are your Main Street today.